Davis steps under center. Gibson and McClendon behind it. Davis with motion by Richard. Will get the ball to McClendon. He leaps. Oh, he doesn't get in. He fumbled the football. Carolina holds. The game is over. And Carolina has won the game. Ben lead to throw. Over the middle. Intercepted. Wolfuck again. Wolfuck the other way. At the 30. The 40. Wolfuck to midfield. Miles Wolfuck with the pick. The heels on the doorstep of an enormous victory. Left side of the line. Hood standing to Williams' is right. Williams going to throw. One-on-one. Davis has it. Touchdown. Carolina wins. Carolina is the Coastal Division champion. Bernard fields it at the 26. Heading to the far side. Gio at the 35. Gio, he's at the 50. No, he's not. Yes, he is. Gio is going to take it. for the possible win. Snap, spot, kick away, high enough, long enough. It's good! It's good! Carolina has won the game on a 42-yard field goal by freshman Hunter Burr. Good gosh, dirty. This is the Heel Tough Blog Hey guys, and welcome in to another edition of the Heel Tough Blog Podcast. It's Anthony Pagnata, your host with you guys as always. And today we are joined by a former Tar Heel cornerback and a current Tar Heel father of a player on the 2021 Tar Heel team. It is Errol Hood who is stopping by with us, and uh, he is doing it from the beach. He is hanging out with the family down there. Uh, so first of all, you know, how's the vacation going, man? I'm assuming that um, you know this is one of the first times. Uh, since you know COVID, that you guys have been able to hang out as a family and everything like that. So I'm assuming that uh, it's it, it's just a great time to be able to hang out with the family uh, down all you know on vacation after everything that we've been through in the last year and a half. Yeah, man, look, man okay, thanks first of all for having me. Mm-hmm. Um, really appreciate it. I'm sorry that I missed it last year, but um, due to the vacation for the family. But um, the beach is good. It's the weather's not what we thought it was going to be, but it is what it is. You know, we take it what we have. We have indoor pools down here, so we just kind of went there and um, enjoyed the hot tub and a little bit of the inside pool. Well, there you go. That, hey, I've been there before, man. Plenty of times it doesn't go as planned, so you got to make use with all the other amenities that you got. But, uh, you know, look, w- when you got, you know, look, talking about your career at Carolina, speaking of adjusting to what you got, you were a guy that went through three different coaches in your time on campus. You were redshirted your first year w- under Mac Brown. Um, you come out, play your first three seasons of your career, uh, your playing career on the field uh, under Carl Torbush, and then in your final season, and you play for John Bunning. So, you know, I think one of the biggest things that I want to know is, you know, how were you able to sort of adjust from all of those different coaches? You know, because, I mean, everybody had a different style and it had to be a little chaotic in your four years on campus. So how did you make those adjustments? Well, for me, um, the first two coaches were were easy because I had the same position coach Mm -hmm. and Coach Ron Case, so nothing changed for me defensively. We still had the same defensive schemes, you know, the same principles, the same coaching um, attitude. So I knew what to expect. Um, I knew Coach... um, Coach Torbush was a fiery coach. You know, Coach Brown was a great coach. I only had him my first year. Um, so, you know, after the season, he had left. But Coach Torbush, you know, he was a fiery coach. We went through so much in terms of, like, growth and, and injuries and stuff like that. So it was a learning curve, you know, definitely. Uh, with Coach Bunning was um, – my fun year, my, my, my best year, only because Coach Bunning was a great coach. I really loved, you know, the, the things that um, he brought to the table and the way that he, you know, treated me. He was a player's coach to me. So um, in terms of all that, now, you know, the coordinators and things like that, you know, it's just, I mean, it, it is what it is. You learn and you go. Well, what was that like under Coach Bunning with him being a guy, you know, so, sort of similar to what we're going to see with the basketball program now with Huber Davis being a guy that was a player like you guys? Was that sort of a different experience from Mac and, and, and Carl because he could sort of give you that, that player's perspective on what it was like to play for the Tar Heels? Yeah, you know, um, 
it was a great hire with Coach Cunningham because you knew that, you know, the, he had the love for the university mm-hmm. because he played there, you know. So um, when he came, when he, the things that he spoke, he knew he spoke from the heart. So it was easier to play for a guy like that. Well, you know, your sophomore year was your breakout year after, you know, your freshman year, you know, you played in, in 10 games, uh, you had, a, you know, 220 snaps, but that sophomore year you come out, you're labeled as one of the co-defensive MVPs along with uh, Billy D. Greenwood, uh, the safety, as well as uh, a tremendous punter, one of the guys that if you, if Toriel fans don't know, go back and look him up, Brian Schmidt, uh, Schmitz. Uh, so, you know, what, what was different about that season for you that, that, that sort of allowed you to step in and, and, and break out as a sophomore. Well, um, again, coach, my position coach was a great motivator. His name is Ron Case. That year, um, coming in, he had told me, he put me in his office, and he was like, look, we got we have six DBs coming in. They're all burners. They all run four twos. And we're all putting them, we're putting them all behind you. <laughs> so it's either you play or watch. What do you want to do? So I had no choice. I had to produce every week. Mm-hmm. So And it was a motivator for me because I wasn't the fastest DB. You know, um, coming there, I wasn't the most experienced DB because I never, I didn't play it in high school. I played quarterback. So I had to learn the position and I had to create a work ethic outside of football, you know, outside of practices to help me, you know, maintain my abilities on the field. So, you know, in that sophomore season, I think one of the games a lot of people are going to remember is that game against then seventh ranked Georgia Tech. Uh, and they're all American quarterback at the time in Joe Hamilton. You know, you had seven tackles in that game, broke up three passes, recovered two fumbles, and even intercepted a pass. You know, what was it? What are your memories from that game against a, a, a really good quarterback in, in Joe Hamilton? And, and, you know, unfortunately, Carolina fell short, but, you know, you, you had just a, a phenomenal performance in that game. Well, you know, the year before was really my first um, time playing. Um, the year that we played in uh, 99, we played um, well, 98, played Georgia Tech, and mm-hmm. Coach Torbush and Coach um, Case stuck me out there as a nickel, you know, with Joy Bly and Stephen Fisher. And, um, you know, Joe Hamilton came and saw me. You know, he came and threw it. When it went, every time I came on the field, the ball was coming my way. So I just kind of, you know, I put that game on the on the map. I'm just like, you know what? Whenever I see him again, things are going to be different. And it was. You know, I was just fired up, and it came from tons of just film study. Film study, knowing what he does and what, what he's going to anticipate and, you know, just kind of baiting them a little bit, you know. And they had some speedy receivers, so, you know, and I wasn't that fast at the time, so I knew that I couldn't bait too much. Yeah, no, I mean, you, that was just a tremendous performance. And, you know, when you look back at your career, it, it really is amazing how that was the one team that you really seemed to play great against for sure. I mean, there was a ton of other great performances from you. And one of those other ones uh, that, you know, you, you really, you know, came out and had a fantastic game in was that Peach Bowl game against uh, Auburn in 2001. You know, f- first of all, w- what do you remember about that game? And the other thing that I wanted to ask you is, you know, going through that 2001 season, schedule that thing had to just be brutal I mean I don't think Tar Heel fans realize the type of schedule that you guys faced that year and just how good you guys were as a team you you were just tasked with taking on some of the nation's best week in and week out yeah, well, that season was kind of was a tough. Well, the, the season before that was kind of tough for me because mm-hmm. you know um, I had had a couple of games where you know it wasn't so good. You know, playing Clemson and and going against Rod Gardner and you know just the the atmosphere of not being successful just kind of fueled my success for that fueled my success for that last season. You know. Um, Coach Troy Bush, they made, I mean, not Coach Troy Bush, Coach Burnick and Coach um, John Tenuta, who was a great coach, just came in and put me in a position to, to do well. You know, um, what I remember most about the, the Peach Bowl game was early in that game, I got an interception and ran into alignment and it uh, knocked my shoulder out of place. So I was playing with a dislocated shoulder. So, you know, uh, one of my good friends who's not here today, Quincy Monk, came to me and said, you got a choice, bro. You either play and get some film or you sit on the bench and watch. And that just seemed to be what Coach um, K said as well. So, you know, I had to play. You know, so um, it was just a, a good thing mentally to come back and just finish my career out of there and to get that win. 
Yeah, that was, and that's one of those ones that you know a lot of Tar Heel fans are going to remember for a while. That win uh, in the Georgia Dome over Auburn. Uh, you know, look now. You know, you're you're in a, a little bit of a different position, but um, you know, you you have a son that's going to Carolina uh, in Caleb. Uh, he is currently enrolled. Of course, just went through spring practice, and you know, one of the things that I find interesting is that you know you were a guy that played quarterback in high school, then had to convert to a different position at the college level. Caleb's having to do the same thing. So, you know, when it comes to that transition, is there, you know, is it good that you are able to offer him some things? Do you feel like you're able to help him out with that, uh, knowing what it's like to have to make that move from being, you know, the the guy that leads everything that the team does at quarterback to a a completely different position as you head to the college level? Well, you know, Caleb is a a, a complete athlete. You know, um, growing up, I was his youth coach. And just, to, you know, we started at a very early age, learning every position. And before, what a lot of people don't realize is and know is that before he started playing quarterback, he was a running back. And his younger brother, Kellen, was the quarterback. And Caleb ran the ball a lot. He was really good. It's just that one, one year, um, his, when he was 12 years old, we were going against a, a very good um, team out of Greensboro. And... Our quarterback, who is now our quarterback at that time, who is now a you know receiver at NC State, and Jacoby Baldwin, he just wasn't filling the quarterback position, and he just like coach, you know, this is not me. I want to probably try something else, you know. So I switched Caleb over because I knew, you know, I went to coach um, our offensive coordinator at the time. So let's put Caleb at quarterback. Let's put Kellen at receiver. Switch C um CJ running back and Jacoby at receiver, and that's Caleb just blended in. You know, he was able to to you know pick up pick up really fast and from there you know he played the quarterback position and he learned Caleb the one thing about Caleb is he's a student of the game he learns really fast and he studies the game and he, he knows how to adjust so my advice to him knowing you know when he went to Carolina is just choose a position because at first they recruited him as DB and you know, at that time you know he was just like dad I just want to play football and I was like I understand son but you you know you do get a choice <laughs> you know right. we're going we're gonna to go to where you want to play Mm-hmm. And you know, and play the position that you want to play. And he said, "I want to play running back." You know, he didn't want to play defense, but he would. Mm-hmm. So I said, "All right, well, you you know, you need to train." So after that, we just after the season, you know, we just started training at running back, and he did it more than you know he and I. You know, he just went and got it. You know, and he talked to the coaches and and all those type things, and he was able to make the adjustment easily. You know, a lot of people's like, man, he, you know, he, they want him to pick up weight. He went from 200 pounds to 230. I, he, I was even surprised, you know, when he went, you know, the, the increase in his weight. But he said that's what he wanted, you know, and he put it on and he started working his footwork, catching balls and stuff like that. And everything else is in the past. Well, yeah, I remember talking to him a couple of years ago after uh, the 2019 game in the fall against Myers Park in their state playoff game. And, you know, he, that was still during the time where they were, you know, looking at him potentially as a DB and, and everything like that. Um, and I think, you know, at the time, most people believed he would end up with Carolina, but it was, you know, something that was still a little bit of an uncertain. You know, what do you remember about that moment and, and your feeling as, as a father and as a guy that had, uh, attended Carolina when he came to you and said, Dad, look, I, I want to play for the Tar Heels. I want to play for Matt Brown. Well, it's a funny story, Anthony. Um, so, whenever Caleb, whenever Caleb committed to play for Carolina, he had, um, the night before he and I, he, had, he and I had hung out, and he was going to a photo shoot with NC State, and um, he and his brother and a couple of teammates went up there, did a photo shoot, did like a little unofficial visit, mm-hmm. and he put up the uniform for NC State. And immediately after the photo shoot, he went down to Tar- down to Carolina and committed. I was at home. I didn't even know. You know, I was sitting in my house just watching TV. I get a call from Caleb. He's like, hey, Dad. I'm like, what's up, son? He's like, I'm at, I'm at Carolina. I was like, okay. I thought you was a state. Yeah, but I went down to um, Carolina afterwards. I said, okay. I said, what's up? He said, I'm going to be a Tar Heel. And I'm like, I know that, but not today. And he calls for a minute, and I'm like, Caleb. Please tell me that you didn't go to my university and commit without me being there. And I, then I heard Coach Brad on the back out, hey, how you doing? You know, and I'm like, uh, <laughs> Coach. I'm like, yeah, Caleb kind of surprises all. You know, and I asked Caleb, I was, like, I was upset with him for about two weeks. 
because I wanted to be there, you know. But you know, when you when you know it, you know it. Mm -hmm. And he said he put that uniform on and from NC State, and he just felt like he did the Tar Heels wrong, and he just knew from that moment on that, you know. Why, why waste my time with all this recruitment when I know where I want to be? So I had nothing to do with his decision to be a target. You know, I'm pretty sure that, you know, me playing there and him growing up there, kind of, you know, playing on the field, kind of weighing in a lot. But he, of course, you know, wanted to be a target his whole life. So I didn't influence him. I mean, I kind of gave him some looks. But <laughs> other than that, you know, um, he made that decision on his own. Well, and, and now you know you've got a guy, you've got a son that's the co that's currently the uh, starting quarterback for Richmond as well. He took over for his brother in Keelan Hood. Um, you know, th this past year definitely a little bit of a different season. Um, you know, for for everybody throughout the state having to play in the spring. But uh, you know, what, what you know is he enjoying his his time at the move to quarterback? Uh, you know, for him, you said he played there when he was younger. What, what uh, you know is he enjoying it? And is he hearing from some of you know the schools as well, including? in Carolina at this point? Well, um, you know, with recruitment and um, the, the COVID, it kind of slowed things down because mm -hmm. he wasn't it film. And Kellen, you know, we switched him his, his sophomore year to um, receiver mm -hmm. because, you know, I didn't want him to back up Caleb for his whole career. Mm -hmm. I wanted him to get on the field. So after that first year, he had some success at receiver, and then the COVID hit, and he didn't get to play at all again. Yeah. So, you know, then the next time he played, he was at quarterback. So, you know, it, it's been tough. You know, and on the recruitment trail, but you know we're getting started with that this week. Uh, coming up, he has a couple of camps. As a matter of fact, I think he has about twelve camps to go to in June, just to prove himself and get a little bit more, um, you know, in front of the exposure in front of the coaches. You know, so um, he did well leading his team, um, doing the same things Caleb did. I've always thought that he's a quarterback that's just as good as Caleb. He's just his body frame is not the same. Mm -hmm. Caleb looked like a grown man out there, and Kellen kind of looks like a kid compared to him. But, you know, on the field, when the ball, you know, when they snapped the ball, Kellen did what he had to do, and he made all conference. And, you know, of course, as a, a father that's trying to build a legacy in Carolina, I would love for my son, both of them, to play there, you mm -hmm. know, but it's not – me to for you know to decide that you know although I you know keep whispering things in Coach Brown's ear you know but you know I think that um, a lot of a lot of schools this in the summer and and the fall is going to recognize Kellen's ability you know and I just I just want you know to tell you to jump on the bandwagon before so that um, we can have a whole hood family there. Well, let's go off the field for the last question here. You know, I know that, you know, as you said, your family, you know, has been very involved in sports. Caleb, uh, you know, was, was a standout at Richmond before coming to Carolina. Keelan currently having a ton of success there as well. And I know um, your one daughter is a cheerleader for the Richmond Raiders. So, you know, w where is life taking you off the football field, though? Where, you know, what have you gotten into post-career for yourself? Well, I'm Anthony. I work with kids. Mm -hmm. um, I've been a youth coach. Uh, you know, entire career, just just being a father figure to the, the community, the kids. I've trained kids. I work with uh, in a great um, field with behaviorally challenged kids, just mentoring and just being able to have an effect on other kids' lives. Um, you know, I'm getting married, and I'm supposed to be next year, but we kind of still decided. Mm -hmm. um, so that's exciting. Congratulations. A, a whole, yeah, yes, yeah, just a whole different you know, look at on life, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, the biggest thing now is just watching my kids. You know, a lot of people say, man, won't you try to coach Kellen? Won't you try to coach high school? No, I've done everything I had to do as a, as a father, as a coach. And now I just sit back and watch them, you know, um, do what we've learned, do what they've taught, then talk. So, you know, life is good. You know, um, I'm going to really enjoy um, watching Caleb in the stands, you know, it's hard because I've never really been to a Tar Heel game like that. You know, I've always been on the field, but watching Caleb in the spring game was just a phenomenal experience, man. Just to see my son put on that uniform and, and you know, just make plays and hear his name called on the intercom, man, was just exciting. And I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, well, we expect big things from him, especially after that phenomenal performance in the spring game. And it could be uh, an, an impact that's felt 
pretty early here. Uh, and we'll, of course, be talking about that throughout uh, the rest of this offseason. But, hey, Errol, thanks for stopping by with us, man. Hey, congratulations on the upcoming wedding. That's great to hear, man. Uh, that, that's just phenomenal. And uh, congratulations on all the success that your family has had. Wish you the best uh, with them going forward. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to talk to you down the line. All right, man? I appreciate it. All right. Thank you so much. All right, so there is Errol Hood, the former Tar Heel cornerback and the dad of current Tar Heel running back Caleb Hood, stopping by with us here on the Heel Tough Blog Podcast. So grateful for him taking a little bit of time out of his family's vacation uh, to talk to us. And, uh, yeah, again, guys, uh, this is one of just many that we're going to be doing. We've got a ton of them already up there. Um, again, we're trying to stagger them out, kind of do uh, every two days or so. And, and, again, you know, we're also staggering out, you know, some of the invites that we're sending out to guys we pick out a small group send out some of those and you know just so they don't pile up too much on us and you know we just record a whole bunch all together and it becomes you know a little bit of you know out of date we had a couple of those last year that you know when I went back and listened to them I realized that you know they were posted way after I had post I had you know talked to some of the guys they had some timely stuff in there like the Greg Ellis interview I know he had a play that he was putting on at a time last year um, that unfortunately at the time when I put out the podcast, it, it it didn't line up well. So I'm making sure that we're sort of you know staggering these things a little bit, and we get to talk to these guys in a timely manner. So uh, yeah, but as I mentioned, there are so many other guys that we are talking to over uh, the next couple of months as we get uh, you know further and further into the off season and start getting towards uh, that 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 big first game for Carolina to start the season. Of course, they'll be in camp before them. We'll have of course all the coverage for you then. We're still having all the off-season coverage for you, uh, both on the podcast and on the website. Uh, Recruiting-wise, everything's starting to open back up as well. So there's a ton of stuff that we're going to have for you over the next couple of weeks. And you know, the best place to check everything out is the Heel Tough Blog website, heeltoughblog.com. You can go there, listen to the podcast, listen to uh, you know the the formerly Roy's Boys podcast, now named the Four Corners podcast. You guys can check all of that out on the line uh, and then of course you've got the uh, you, you've got all the articles that you guys want uh, coverage of all of the recruiting stuff going on we've got a bunch of scouting reports that we've been doing as well for the guys that are going to be on campus here in the month of June you want to check all those out there's a looks back into the 2020 fall season or 21 spring season at some of the Tar Heels top targets and we're going through those right now breaking down each player's game telling you what to you know expect what what Carolina sees in some of these guys and what we're seeing in some of these guys when we watch them in some of these games. That's some really interesting stuff that we put up there. And then, of course, we've got uh, you know all the coverage that you guys need once the trail opens back up, which it is going to officially open back up uh, on June 1st. Uh, that's actually, uh, actually at the time when this will be posted, uh, the trail will be open. This will be the first day that it's open, and that means that Zach Rice will be on campus. There are a couple other guys I think that may be taking their uh, opportunity to visit on the first day as well before unofficial visits. And then, uh, of course, later on this weekend, big time uh, visits coming from guys like Jake Pope, who's going to be on campus uh as well as uh, a couple of other big names. Jaden Lucas, I believe, is also going to be on campus uh, this weekend. So there's a ton of big-time recruits that are going to be on campus over the next couple of weeks. We are going to have you covered on all of those fronts uh, and and give you all the latest on that. And then, of course, uh, as we get closer and closer to the season, as we talked about, we'll be doing more and more podcasts, including the video versions of the podcast, which will be coming back. Uh, You can go and and check those out. The Facebook page is the best place to check everything out. That's where you get the articles, the podcast, the video podcast. Uh, those are coming back this year because we got our studio back. So that's awesome. We're going to be having those again for you this year. Uh, you know, we had them last year. We lost the studio. We were doing them upstairs and then uh, at, at my house. And then unfortunately, uh, you know, that that really, I mean, it was, it was okay, but it wasn't great. So we had kind of decided that, look, we just weren't going to end up doing them this year. But now that we've got the studio, 
studio back. We're going to bring those back, and we're going to be doing them uh, for you guys during the season. We'll probably have a couple leading up to the season as well that'll be uh, on video, uh, probably some of the position previews, all those kinds of things. We'll have those for you. So keep an eye out for all of that coming up. Uh, on, you know, and, and again, it's on the Facebook page, best place you can find it, Heel Tough Blog on Facebook. And then uh, for the other social media avenue that we use the most, which is Twitter, uh, it is going. It is at Heel Tough Blog on Twitter. Uh, you guys can check that out. And then if you want uh, the personal uh, Twitter feeds to follow, mine is is uh, at HTB Anthony. You've got Josh, who is the normal co-host for us, does all the in-season stuff, uh, on-the-field stuff. Uh, that's a- at HTB Josh. And then uh, our recruiting guy, our guy that joins us for all of the recruiting podcasts, and he has been following this stuff in-depth for the last couple of years for us. It is at HackZubbard2 on Twitter to follow Zach Hubbard, our recruiting guy. So that wraps it up for this edition of the podcast. Want to thank Errol Hood for stopping by with us. Want to thank you guys for listening. And as always, go Tar Heels. Go Tar Heels.